So for this problem, we have a cantilever beam, which is three separate beams that have been glued together. And we want to know what the stresses are at point B, which is in between two of those beams. We're going to assume that it's split equally into three. We want to find, in order to find the whole stress element, we need to find sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. And I'm not going to actually draw the element, but we'll calculate it. All right, let's get started. So first, sigma x. Now I have to reason through what forces are going to be affecting in the x direction. My shear force right here, my load is not going to affect it vertically. It might deform it this way, but it's also going to create bending moment internally, and that's how it's going to affect point B. So I use this equation for bending moment stress. Well, I'll draw a picture where we've cut up B. This is 10 kips, and this is the moment at B, and this is the shear at B, and this is two meters in distance. Take a moment at B, so I have 10 kilonewtons with a moment arm of two meters, gives me a moment of 20 kilonewton meters. Y is measured from the neutral axis, positively upward, to the point of interest. So this is going to be a negative half the distance of, or half the thickness of one of these beams. Each one is three centimeters thick, so it's going to be one and a half centimeters in the negative y direction. And I'll convert that to meters. Now we're going to calculate our moment of inertia. So we have to look at our cross-sectional area, which is a square. This is nine centimeters by nine centimeters. So our B and H are equal, so that's B times B cubed, essentially, divided by 12. That's 9 centimeters by 9 centimeters cubed, divided by 12. And I'm going to convert that into meters. Let's say 100 centimeters per meter to the fourth. And in my calculator, I get that to be 5.468 times 10 to the negative sixth meters to the fourth. So I've calculated everything. Let me plug it in. Negative 20 meters. Negative 0.015 meters. Man, I'm forgetting units all over the place. Divided by 5.468 times 10 to the negative six meters to the fourth. I have three negatives multiplied by each other, so that's one negative. And this times this divided by this gets us a number of five, four, eight, six, zero kilopascals. So that gives us the x direction, but we're looking for x, y, and tau x, y. Sigma y, let's look back at our picture. The only time that we're going to have sigma y for a beam is if our force is directly above it. And we're not going to talk about that in this class. So for this class, for beams, our sigma y is going to be zero. Tau x y, it's going to be some kind of shearing at an angle. It's going to be deforming like we talked about. This is definitely going to be having some kind of friction in between these plates as it bends. That's another way of looking at it. So our equation is going to be eq over ib. The only other thing that can cause shearing would be our torque, but we don't have any torque going on. We have to know VB, and looking back at our moment diagram over here, our free body diagram, our VB, if I look in the Y direction, they're just going to cancel each other out. So this is 10 kilonewtons. Okay, our Q. Let's go over the definition of Q real quick. So we look at our cross-sectional area, draw our neutral axis, we draw our plane of interest. We wanted to know the shear at this point. Then we have to know the area of the everything above the point of interest. And then we want to find the distance from the centroid of the area to the centroid of the whole object, which is our neutral axis. So our areas, that's going to be 2 thirds of the height, that's 6 centimeters, by 9 centimeters. And our centroidal distance is going to be just one-sixth of the whole height. So our Q 
is going to be six centimeters times nine centimeters times nine centimeters divided by six which equals 81 centimeters cubed let's convert that one meter 100 centimeters cubed equals 81 times 10 to the negative sixth meters cubed so that's our Q now let's calculate our I and that's Ix to be more specifically. We already calculated that up here, so I'll just reuse that value. And our B is our width, which is going to be the same at any location, but that's going to be 9 centimeters. And I'll just write that in meters. All right, so these are our variables. Let's plug them in. You're probably wondering why I put a negative sign here. And let me explain this real quick. There are two ways you could think about it. If you look at the bigger picture, we have a force going down on the right. And if I draw a stress element having a shear going down on the right, I'd have to, if I complete the other three forces on our tau xy, that's a negative orientation of tau xy. Thus, we have the negative sign. Mathematically, what's going on is that our equation tau equals vq over ib this is defined for this particular tau and the forward orientation the positive x direction is the positive orientation of this tau and if it's oriented in the negative orientation for tau it creates a positive tau xy in other words what it boils down to is tau xy equals a negative tau for this equation. For the torque equation, it's just a regular positive, but we don't have that in this problem. So when we're talking about vq over ib, tau xy equals the negative of that equation. Okay, let's plug it in. Negative 10 kilonewtons times 81 times 10 to the negative 6 meters cubed. 5.468 times 10 to the negative 6 meters to the fourth, 0 0.09 meters, and that equals negative 1.646 kilopascals. And so we're looking for our original stress element at B. We have our sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. And then we could do whatever math from there.